ladies and gentlemen, and being a producer of Wrestle Massacre, as well as Inside Movies Galore, I am David Stregi, and welcome to Delusions of Grandeur. Enjoy the reviews. I certainly did. college flunkies. I've had enough of this from you and from everyone else. I know what you guys are trying to do. Break me down, drive me out of the force. Well, it's going to take a hell of a lot more than a lame prank like this to get Curtis Mooney to throw in his badge, so fuck you. Over. Did you miss me? I guess not. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Delusions of Grandeur. I'm your host, David Sreggi, and here I have another review for you, this time of a television series that um, went from 2008 to uh, 2008. <laughs> it was a TV miniseries, and it was called Kurozuka. Um, and I'm excited to say that I finished this 12-episode, um, thing, um, that I picked up, uh, with, uh, two other, um, miniseries from, uh, Madhouse Studios, and, uh, there it is in the middle, uh, but it ended up being the top disc in the spindle pile. I hate these spindle th uh, things, they're, uh, they make it so that the discs are more scratchable to the others. But anyways, uh, the uh, Kurosaka actually means black tomb. Um, and this TV uh, uh, miniseries was based on a novel uh, that was written by Baku Yama, uh, Yamakura which was then turned into a manga um, and illustrated by Takashi Noguchi and serialized in a youth magazine called Oh Super Jump in 2003 by Suisha. And that was put out in December of 2006. Um, and it was... Uh, the. TV's miniseries was directed by Tetsuro Araki. Um, but uh, the plot of this um, is based on a 12th century man uh, by the name of Kuro. Um, and uh, Kuro is uh, voiced by Brad Swaley. And uh, he is running from his half-brother with um, a servant of his by the name of um, Benke. And he is um, he's caught in a fight, which his servant helps him out of. And then they end up going to a house in the nearby woods, which is inhabited by Kuramitsu, uh, who just so happens to be an immortal and who apparently drinks blood. So this does have a vampire-esque um, quality to, uh, or a vampire-like creature um, 
and uh, what happens is uh, um, Kiro is actually um, has some kind of a fever and she helps him get through the fe uh, fever during the night but um, he is also given the, uh, the choice to spend the rest of his life with uh, with her and and uh, over time I guess uh, he just smitten with her um, and he kind of falls in love with her and um, in his moment of being in love he uh, says yes to uh, uh, her giving him these these powers uh, but um, in the moment that uh, she starts to ha uh, hand him these powers uh, he is attacked and uh, he is ultimately killed, but, um, and because the transformation wasn't allowed to fully complete, um, his, uh, I guess later on we real, uh, we come to realize that, uh, um, he, And he doesn't know this at the time. He needs to get a new body each time. That, uh, and that's because the the transformation only went part way. But that is besides the uh, uh, besides the point. We get uh, much of the story in backflashes because he uh, he ultimately ends up in this post apocalyptic future. Um, which is kind of uh, 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 caught between the, uh, the this group of uh, people called the Red Army and uh, uh, the Hanawa group, a group which um, one is a rebel, a, a rebel people of humans who are trying to hide from these Red Army uh, uh, people, and the other is a group that is tr uh, uh, trying to. Um, um, get more blood of uh, since they know of the uh, the vampire creature, and it's uh, they think it's the um the eternal life cure, and ultimately it, this series becomes a a journey and a battle to uh, to get to his lost love, and. Uh, He meets some people along the way, uh, 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 along the way, uh, way to help him to uh, to um, get back to his um, his love, uh, which is uh, Kiramitsu. Whatever happened between them created a bond um, uh, between them, and it's uh, it's very romantic, and yet uh, at the same time it's haunting because um, and. Uh, one of the things I like about this little series is, even though it jumps around, it, it, it I do believe that they di it did finish it in the very end with, with uh, even though it made you have more questions than answers, um, I, I do believe that it did have an ending. Um, he made some characters along the, uh, along the way, Kuan, um, uh, Hasekwa, um, but um, there's a character in here that uh, that seems to protect him just a little bit, and then it's like he um, He wakes up in this post-apocalyptic wor uh, world, and he's in search of his lo love. He's got this sword. Um, someone steals his uh, uh, sword, and evidently, um, someone who works for this uh, this uh, rebel Hanawa um, group um, comes across uh, across him when he's trying to get his sword ba uh, back. And, of course, the Red Army seems to be led by this uh, dude with t uh, with uh, metal tentacles or some oh shit. He kind of is a tall, thin, white, a white, long-haired uh, dude 
who seems to be uh, uh, to be <laughs> um, unbeatable at, at least at one point but um, he ends up having to go up against him in the end there's a creature that has a turtle shell on his back and he's kind of uh, a Rumpelstiltskin kind of a Riddler kind of ca character and then he in turn is also kind of led by this woman who evidently shoots vines and uh, these uh, these people including another guy who seems to be using unusable people uh, people to try to figure out the best way to create this eternal lifeblood and you see this um, unimitable machine where um, apparently all these humans that uh, uh, they have no use for they get rid of them and uh, I think that's re a really a nasty dark side of this story where you know you, you see all these uh, pe people just being killed for no reason and uh, so this kind of plays like a game but, uh, 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 but I love how it's set through the centuries and you get to see some of the reasons why um, Kiro is in love with this woman and he, he is he's obviously on uh, as he learns more and more about uh, you know the memories that he does not remember see that that's the thing he is going on this journey to find his love Kiramitsu he doesn't know why uh, why he couldn't find her at first uh, but he knows he must find her uh, find her uh, he doesn't remember memor memories of her, and uh, along the way, he gets a memory here, a memory there, and none of it seems to be entirely good. Some of it is positive, but he knows he still must ev eventually find her. And it turns out that um, she was actually working for the other side and uh, trying to create this body for uh, for him. For his next lifetime, uh, time, his next life period, and you kind of feel kind of sorry for uh, 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 for him. Um, oh, uh, once it comes around to uh, to uh, the the very end, because he he asks her in the very end, um, "Do you uh, can't you just can't you just be without me? Can't you just let me die?" Uh, I mean, these are questions that he asks. I mean, there there was a possible other love interest as well. Um, there was a blonde that se uh, seemed to uh, she was like the last person to uh, to uh, survive, but she was ultimately killed by the body that uh, that was supposedly supposed to be his to overtake. And uh, I like that the fact that this was uh, left very, uh, even though it somewhat had some um some nudity it, it it left it uh very clean and um it was like different shades of uh of different worlds to, uh, to me and uh the thing is uh th this story is uh, uh is actually loosely based on uh the real live uh person uh, in Japanese history called Minamato no Yoshitsune. And apparently he was a, a military commander in the late Heian and early Kamakura um, era. And he was, was a military commander during the Kapai Wars. Uh, evidently he toppled the I see Haishi branch of the Terra clan um, and which uh, brought his brother a uh, brother his half brother your your tomo or uh, consolidated power and uh, he evidently perished after being betrayed by a son of a trusted ally but um, 
they're uh, they're in. Um, so, uh, some of his death is actually shrouded in uh, rumors. Uh, rumors. Uh, even one claiming that he made his way past Hokkaido and uh, sailed to Asia and resurrected under the name Genghis Khan. So apparently he is like one, a legendary samurai of his time. Uh, or at least that's what, what the character is based on. And uh, I thought that this was a very unique tale. Um, I liked each battle that he had to overcome. Uh, come. It's like it, he had to uh, get to a certain point where all of a sudden the blood power kicked in and his eyes turned re uh, red when, uh, when he had to uh, had to you know go full-on vampire and uh, you know uh, and uh, but the thing is he needed blood and I liked the uh, liked the part where we uh, uh, figured out that every hundred years um, his body actually uh, got old that he was using so he had to have his head removed to, to uh, a different body for him to live on. So I, I guess I liked that kind of aspect. And I guess I also kind of like the aspect that his servant also. Um, and uh, if you do not know that I spoil uh, these thing, uh, things, uh, do uh, please know now. <laughs> uh, but Ben K., his servant, he um, he had learned what kind of a creature uh, uh, Kuromitsu was, and uh, he lost his faith for some time and uh, got uh, got in, mixed in with the uh, the spiritualism behind the uh, the group that uh, was against Kuromitsu and. Uh, um, they're the ones who uh, who wanted uh, the uh, the eternal life to be found. And the fact that he survived for many years later and he was one of the ones that uh, Kuro had to go up against. Uh, so I thought that was interesting uh, that you know some things can last during time periods. So in any case, uh, uh, but uh, the reason why I got into this um, uh, this series is because the voice of Kira, uh, Kira Mitsu is is by J uh, Janice J uh, Jowd, and she j uh, just so happened to have voiced um, a couple of characters in a mini series that I am uh, that I am currently watching from uh, from Canada. Called Broken Saints, um, she voiced Shandala and uh, 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 one of the strippers in here uh, in this particular uh, uh, production. Uh, so I I hunted this series down, and it is the first that I watched, and I learned that uh, Madhouse uh, was the company that put this out, same company who put out Perfect Blue. Which I just recently got uh, got a cool copy of uh, just recently myself. So, in any case, hopefully you enjoyed my description of this animated series. It was certainly enjoyable. Um, I loved the title song for the music. Um, let's see if I remember cor uh, correctly. The title song for the music was some techno uh, punk uh, so, uh, song, something about society or something like that. Coming to you. And uh, I just uh, I just enjoyed the story, it, it, um, and uh, I would recommend it to those who have not seen uh, seen it or whatnot. So, but. Thank you for listening. Have a great day, evening, or morning, wherever you are. Hopefully you enjoyed my description of this series. Um, I was entertained. I mean, I, I, maybe I would have wanted some more 
I feel like there was kind of a jump straight to the future with this Hinawa group of rebels. And, and, I mean, it is kind of an odd series, but at least it has some kind of a finish. And I do believe that it does have some polish, some very li uh, 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 likable characters. And it is worth watching, so thank you so much. Enjoy the review. You were good, kid, real good. But as long as I'm around, you'll always be second best, see?